We're going to take a few minutes to introduce this idea of a cumulative distribution function or a CDF. So formally, the cumulative distribution function, or CDF for short, all it does is it takes as input a real number, little x, and returns the probability that the random variable, capital X, is less than or equal to x. Okay, so we write it with this um, f, capital F notation, and what we're talking about is the probability that I see an outcome from the sample space that gets mapped into a value that's less than or equal to x. Okay, so that's a lot to think about. Let's write it in a simpler shorthand. So it's the probability of the set of values where x is equal to or less than little x. Or it's just the probability that random variable x is less than or equal to x. And so these are all shorthand representations of what I have above. And this bottom one is often the easiest thing to think about out of all of them. Okay, and the main thing I want to say is this concept is not very useful for discrete random variables. So why am I even bothering to introduce it? Well, later on, it's going to serve um, to connect what we learn about discrete random variables to continuous random variables. Okay, so continuous random variables can be a little bit more, um, you know, counterintuitive, and it's really helpful to carry over um, intuition from discrete random variables to help us get started with continuous random variables. And so it's useful to learn about what the CDF is doing here so that when you see it in the continuous case, it'll make more sense. Okay, so all we're saying here is I have this function, which I write capital F of random variable X that I am interested in. And when I plug in a value, little x, what it gives me back is the probability that I see a value of that random variable that is less than or equal to little x. I have a few basic properties, okay? I'm just gonna write them out. Um, so first of all, if I plug in negative infinity, then I'm gonna get zero back. And the reason is you're not going to see a value of the random variable that is um, less than or equal to negative infinity. It's not allowed to take that value. It takes values larger than that because it lives on, on the real line rather than the extended real line. Okay, if I plug in positive infinity, then I get one, and that's normalization because the total probability of something happening has to be one. And if I ask what's the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to positive infinity, well, I'm just asking what's the probability it took any value, and that has to be one by normalization. Okay, a little more interesting is that the CDF is a non-decreasing function of this little x, and that is non-negativity. Okay, because I'm not allowed to have negative probability values, once I absorb the probability of a value, all I'm doing is looking at more and more values as I slide to the right, and so I'm just going to be, um, at best, staying flat or increasing. I'm never going to decrease. I would need negative probabilities in order to decrease. Okay, if I have two values, A and B, then if I take the difference in the CDF, that will give me the probability of an interval, and specifically the interval where x is strictly greater than a and less than or equal to b. And if you just look at the definition of the CDF, this will make sense, uh, but it's just a useful thing to remember. And finally, and this is a continuity statement, so if I take the limit of this little epsilon going down towards zero, right, so decreasing towards zero, then I'm going to get the value as if it were zero, okay? So this is just meaning that it's continuous if I come from the right to the left. Okay, not much to worry about for right now, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, for discrete random variables, the CDF has a special form. So specifically, it's a piecewise constant function. And what it does is it jumps up by the value of the PMF at every point in the range of the random variable. Okay, let's just look at some examples. All of this will make more sense in the examples. So in the first example, I'm going to draw a PMF for you, okay, just to visualize it, a very simple PMF. So I'm going to have three values, and the probabilities of those values are going to be a fourth and a half. So starting at one, I'm going to see a fourth, go up to a half, back down to a fourth, okay? What's the CDF going to look like? Well, remember, the CDF is the probability that I'm seeing less than or equal to that value, okay? So let's draw it up to the value one, okay? So here are the these are the values I'm going to see. And up to the value one, it's going to be zero because I can't see values less than one. The first value I can see 
from the PDF, PMF above is one, okay? So before that, there's no probability. Then right at one, I jump up to one fourth because the probability that X is equal to one is one fourth. So the probability that X is less than equal to one is one fourth. And so this is the first jump and I jump up by P of X one, which is one fourth. And that's what I mean by piecewise constant. I keep going because nothing changes for a while, right? The probability that I'm less than one half is really just the probability that I'm equal to one because that's the only interesting thing going on up there. Until I get to two, now the probability that I'm less than or equal to two is equal to the probability that I'm equal to two and the probability that I'm equal to one. So this is a jump up by the probability of two, which is one half, and I go all the way to three fourths. And finally, I slide all the way up to three and when I reach three and I plug in three, I jump up to one because the probability that I'm less than or equal to three, I can see from the PMF plot above, that is everything. There's nothing after three, so that has to be one. And that's the end of this CDF. It just slides on to the right, staying at the value one forever. Okay, that's where it's gonna stay. Okay, so this is all the CDF, CDF is. I just take the PMF and I translate it into these jumps up by its values, and then I just slide to the right until I get to the next value. We'll do one more example just to make it more clear. Okay, so that one was kind of symmetric. We'll do something that's a little more asymmetric. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to see values at, let's say, um, one, two, three, and four, and the values of the PMF there are gonna be one and fifths and two fifths. And so let's say at one, I'm two fifths, then I'm zero, then one fifth, and then two fifths again. What is the CDF gonna look like? So we'll be a little quicker this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide from the left starting at zero, right? And I am going to go until I hit, so first of all, let me get all these values up here. So I'm gonna slide from the left until I get to one. One is the first place in the range of the PMF. I'm gonna jump up by two fifths. I'm gonna keep going until I see another point that has positive probability and notice that is not going to happen at two. It's gonna happen at three. So two there is kind of plotted just so that we are sure that it has probability zero, but technically it's not even in the range of X because it has probability zero, not probability one. The range of X is really one, three, four. So I just keep going until I hit three, then I jump up by one fifth because that's the PMF value at three, okay? And the probability that I'm less than or equal to three is three fifths and I go all the way to four, and then I finally jump all the way up to one. That's the last value. The last value always has to carry me all the way up to one, okay? That's how I draw CDFs, okay? Not super interesting at this stage, just useful to get comfortable with the concept. Okay, so let's work out some probabilities from this example on the left. Okay, so I'm gonna write the case-by-case -case formula for the PMF. So it's a fourth at x equals one and three and a half at x equals two. And the case by case formula for the CDF, okay, it's gonna be zero for x less than one. It's gonna be a fourth between one and strictly less than two. Three fourths starting from two until strictly less than three and then one afterwards. Okay, so that's the case by case formula for the CDF drawn here. And let me just ask, what is the probability that this random variable x is going to be less than or equal to two. All right, and this is exactly the kind of question that the CDF is designed to handle. All right, well, we're gonna calculate it in two ways, just so you can see how it works out in both ways. So if I just have the PMF, let's say, and I ask what's the probability that X is less than or equal to two, well, what I'm doing is I'm adding up the PMF value at one, with the PMF value for two, because those are the values of X that satisfy the condition X is less than or equal to two. And so I'm gonna add those up. So those values, a fourth and a half. So I add up a fourth and a half. And I, as you saw, I could look it up from either the plot or the case by case formula, and I get three fourths. From the CDF, all I need to do is when I see this question less than or equal to something is I plug into the CDF at two. Okay, that's what the CDF gives me. So I'm going to go and look at the value of two, either on the plot or in the case by case formula, and I see that it tells me three fourths. And that corresponds to the same answer I got from the PMF. 
Okay, what about something else? What is the probability that x, so the random variable x, let's say what's the probability that it's greater, so strictly greater than one, and less than or equal to three? Okay, so this is, again, a pretty simple question. Let's see how to answer it from the PMF side. So if I write out the condition, the random variable lies between one and is less than or equal to three. So I add up the values for two and three because those are the values satisfying this condition. And from the PMF, I see it's those values or from the case by case, I see it's these values and I add up a half plus a fourth, that's three fourths. For the CDF, the calculation is a little different. And so when I ask about this interval, if you remember from the previous slide, so a couple slides ago, or you could go and look it up, what it said is you can take the difference in CDF values to calculate the probability of an interval. So this is the interval x falls between a and b. So I subtract the probability of three from the probability of one. So here, three is playing the role of b from that property and one is playing the role of a. And I can look up these values on the plot or in the case-by-case -case formula. So I'm subtracting one and a fourth, and I get three fourths. So I get the same answer, which is exactly what I had hoped for. And really it just depends on what you're given, what's easier to calculate. You could use either of these methods. Honestly, with the discrete random variables, you're going to usually prefer to use the PMF. I just wanted to show you these calculations. So the CDF starts to make more sense.